Single setback is Garrett, takes it on the counter move. Up the middle, big goal. goal. 20, 25, 30, near side, foot race. He's at the 40, he's at midfield. Marcour is Garrett to the 30, to the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Columbia. 86 yards for Marcouris Garrett. Lob it. Right sideline. End zone. And a diving catch for a touchdown by Chris Connors. His second of the game. Drops straight back. Steps up. Winds up. Corner. End zone. Touchdown. Hamilton Garner. Welcome to Columbia Football Today. Presented by Carmine's Restaurants. I'm Jerry Recco, and this afternoon the Lions kick off season number two under Patricia and Shepherd head coach Pete Mangorian on the road against the Fordham Rams. Lots of excitement around the program, and we'll get it started in just a moment on AM 970, The Answer. Carmine's is proud to be a sponsor of the Columbia Lions. Carmine's is New York City's legendary family-style restaurant with locations on the Upper West Side, the Theater District, Tropicana Resort Atlantic City, Atlantis Resort Bahamas, and our new location at Forum Shops in Las Vegas. Make your reservation on carminesnyc.com, and of course, roar, lion, roar. Saturday in New York City, and what a better way to spend your day than with some local college football. So happy to be here. Jerry Recco on Columbia Football Today. Season opener for the Lions, who battle the 3-0 Fordham Rams for the Liberty Cup. Always special at the end of this game to see the emotion of the winning team as they hoist the cup. Just a quick background for those who may be unfamiliar. This is year 12 of the Liberty Cup. The series initiated in September 2002 to commemorate those who lost their lives in the tragic terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001. The Rams have won the Cup the last three seasons, with Columbia winning a high-scoring affair 40-28 to at Jack Coffey Field back in 2009. And since we're looking back, time for a quick recap of 2012 and a look ahead to the season in front of us. Pete Mangorian was named the Patricia and Shepard head coach over the winter months in early 2012, and he and his staff put together an initial campaign of 3-7. and seven. A lot of good, though, coming from that first year as we highlight the seasons had by, well, let's say Marcoris Garrett. Now a senior, Garrett had an all-Ivy season, coming just shy of 1,000 yards, finishing with 957, the third highest single-season mark for a Columbia running back, and he finished third in the Ivy League. How about other returning contributors, such as Connor Nelligan and Chris Connors? Nelligan, a junior, Connors now a sophomore. Nelligan with 62 catches for 636 yards last season. Connors had three touchdown catches in eight games. And then there's Hamilton Garner. He had a down year for him, but he's expecting to have a huge season here in 13. Then there's the defense, and so many good players, and we could talk about a lot of them for a long time, but we'll highlight a few, like Shea Adebayo, who returns for one more season from injury. You'll remember in that Marist game in the season opener, he went out after just one quarter, and that was it. Zach Olinger, who led the team with 89 tackles, adding a sack, three interceptions, and a touchdown. But 89 tackles, that's nearly nine tackles a game. And how about Markel Carter in the secondary? He had one of 10 line interceptions, the safety doing so much in terms of just managing the defense on the field. Now, as we mentioned, a lot of good in Mangurian's first year at the helm. The opening day win over Marist, despite the injury to Adebayo, plus a thrilling win over Yale in late October. And for me, you know, the most impressive game of 2012 I look at was week nine, the win over Cornell. And here's why. Columbia had a bad game the week prior up at Harvard. They were two and six. And, you know, Sal Licata and I talked about this going into this game it would have been very easy for Columbia to just kind of throw it away. Again, 2-6, and six, they were playing a big red team that had Jeff Matthews at quarterback and a lot of expectation. We had heard really all offseason and all season about how great Matthews was. He can throw for 400 yards a game. He can throw for 350, 500. Who knows how many touchdowns? And like I said, it would have been easy for the Lions to just kind of mail it in. But you know what? A lot of credit goes to the kids and the coaching staff for this game because they were tremendous that Saturday as they beat Cornell 34-17. The defense really was suffocating. They were all over the run game. They suffocated Matthews, held him to just 12 of 25 passing with a pick. Marcoris Garrett, I mean, what a day this kid had. He ran all over the home field turf, 187 yards rushing and a score. Connors had a couple of touchdown passes. And, of course, the outgoing senior, Sean Brackett, in his final home game of his career, threw for almost 200 yards and three touchdowns. I just thought that win said a lot about the character of the club, the coaching staff, uh, and everything going forward. Now, to me, this Lions club has the makings of a really good physical team going forward, which brings me to today and this season. No doubt, this is a tough opener, not just facing Fordham, but facing a Fordham team on the road, playing a Rams club that's 3-0 coming off, wins against Villanova and Temple. 
And how about that win over Temple last week? Quarterback Michael Niebrick finding Sam Ajala in the Lincoln Financial Field end zone from 29 yards out for the game-winning score with just four seconds remaining. And if you see the highlights of the game, it really was something because it was a nice throw, and obviously Niebrick made a nice play. But this was all Ajala, who looked to be triple covered in the end zone. He goes up, makes the catch, and Fordham with a stunning win as the point after was good. Not to mention, today, by the way, homecoming, so the Fordham faithful should be fired up. Now, that having been said, when you look at Columbia's front seven, anchored by Adebayo, Wells Childress, Nick Melka, Nico Padilla, Brian East, Pooley Ace, and of course, Olinger, I think it's a very formidable group, one that should be able to get pressure on Niebrick. Just have to be careful of Niebrick's running ability because he does a lot of that. And the offense should be explosive. Brett Nottingham, haven't even mentioned him yet. He's the transfer from Stanford who seems to have a rifle arm with nice touch. As you can imagine, a lot of people pretty excited to see what he can bring. You got wide receivers. You got the running threat from Garrett, not to mention uh, really what could be a huge game in season for, as we said earlier, Hamilton Garner. When I look at the Columbia team, the level of talent and commitment they've shown, really, I see no reason why this can't be a special season. We'll take a time out. When I come back, we will take a look around the Ivy League today and the week one matchups. Plus later, former Columbia star basketball player and my partner on the basketball broadcasts, Dallin Cuff will have a chat with Coach Pete Mangorian. All of that and more as Columbia football today continues on AM 970, The Answer. Fairway Markets. We're about low prices to be sure, but we're also about the people who work here. Fairway people are about food. Fairway people are recognized as the authority for their particular specialty. What we like is talking to you about what you're serving for dinner tonight. You see, we love food. It just so happens that our love for food has been transubstantiated by our place in the realm of gastronomy. We're world-class food halls. We're the go-to destination for millions who want not just low prices and not just a vast array of organic fruits and vegetables and and not just cutting-edge, high-end, restaurant-quality ingredients, but who want the experience, the fairway experience of of being in the midst of a perpetual celebration of, of that which makes life worth living. Food. Fairway. Like no other market. Back on Columbia football today, still lots to do, including a chat with head football coach Pete Mangorian. But today is also the season opener for the other seven teams in the conference, all non-conference games. The league season officially begins up in Providence as Brown kicks off season number 16 under Phil Estes at 1230. As they host Georgetown, the Bears in 2012, 7-3, winning their last three games of the season. They were 4-3 and three in league play. Along with Columbia and Fordham at 1, it's Yale and Colgate. The Bulldogs coming off a last place finish a season to go at 1-7. and seven and 2-8 and eight overall. At 3 o'clock, Cornell with a tough matchup at Bucknell, the Bison beating Marist in their season opener 27-13. Harvard is on the road, way out on the West Coast, playing at San Diego. The Crimson with a solid season last year, going 8-2, and two, but their two losses were in league play, and they finished second in the standings to the conference champion Penn Quakers, who won a Week 9 matchup at Franklin Field. Last year, Harvard opened the season by beating San Diego 28-13. Tim Murphy entering his 20th season as head coach, he is the second longest tenured coach in the league. Only Penn's Al Bagnoli has had more staying power. Bagnoli and his Quaker team, the defending champions, home for Lafayette tonight at 6. Also at 6 o'clock, Dartmouth is at Butler, and Princeton kicks off another season of Ivy League football on the NBC Sports Network with a home game against Lehigh. The Mountain Hawks, in a game I went to last week, beat Mammoth 28-25, and really a crazy play in this game late in the fourth quarter. Looked like Mammoth was set up for a win, but on a fourth and four from their own 14 late in the fourth quarter, Lehigh was forced to punt. Tim Divers had his punt blocked. The ball went way up in the air, and Nick Hayden grabbed it and came out of the pile on the other side and ran 37 yards out near midfield. It was bizarre. Two plays later, Brandon Bilikowski hit Lee Kerpus for a 40-yard touchdown pass, and the Mountain Hawks came away with a thrilling win. And I'm telling you, the crowd there at Kessler Field was absolutely stunned. Anyway, Lehigh and Princeton to be shown on the NBC Sports Network tonight at six time to step aside on the other side of a quick break dallin cuff sits down with columbia field hockey coach mary beth freeman we'll have a lengthy chat with head coach pete mangorian as well as the countdown to kickoff continues cannot wait columbia at fordham later today at jack coffee field columbia football today on am 970 the answer comes right back after this Celebrate your style at Aloft Harlem, a proud partner of Columbia University and the first hotel in Harlem in over 40 years. 
Guests visiting Columbia can now stop staying at run-of-the-mill hotels and experience a loft Harlem instead. Meet and mingle at our WXYZ bar, grab a tasty snack from our refuel station, and always stay connected with free hotel-wide, high-speed internet access. Then breeze into one of our guest rooms featuring our ultra-comfy signature bed, custom amenities by Bliss Spa, 42-inch LCD TVs, and more. A loft. The sister brand of W Hotels is where visitors of Columbia can get style at a steal. Visit aloftharlem.com today to view all of our special offers. Welcome back to Columbia Football Today on AM 970, The Answer. Columbia opening the season on the road at Fordham this afternoon. Now we step aside from the football for just a moment, as earlier this week, Dallin Cuff had a chance to sit down with field hockey coach Mary Beth Freeman. The club 2-2, two and two, open 2-0, two and oh, but have dropped two straight. However, those two losses, nothing to sneeze at, to number 20 American and number 2 Maryland. So the first question Dallin asked Coach Freeman was, how do you assess the performance of the club so far? Like, 
So much more to do here on Columbia Football today. And when we come back, we will hear from the head coach of the Lions now in his second year, Pete Mangorian, as Columbia gets set to take on the Fordham Rams from Jack Coffee Field. You're listening to Columbia Football Today on AM 970, The Answer. Havana Central at the West End is proud to be a sponsor and supporter of Columbia University. For over 70 years, the West End has been a vital part of this community's history. In addition to being Columbia's longest-running bar, the West End is also the birthplace to the beat generation, gathering such luminaries as Allen Ginsberg, Jack Kerouac, and Lucian Carr. Havana Central at the West End is owned and operated by Jeremy Marin, a proud Columbia Business School alumnus. Generations of students and faculty have had the long-standing tradition of gathering and celebrating at the West End. So come enjoy real Cuban cooking and the best mojitos in New York at Havana Central at the West End, 2911 Broadway, and Roar Lion Roar. Columbia University offers a Master of Science degree in sports management that provides the competitive edge needed to enter and advance in all sectors of the sports industry. This rigorous part-time graduate program offers a broad understanding of sports business as well as industry-specific management skills taught by national leaders in sports. To learn more and for a schedule of to learn more and for a schedule of information sessions, go to www.cecolumbia.edu forward slash sportsmasters. Great to have you with us on this Saturday morning, the season opener for the Columbia Lions. And welcome back into Columbia football today on AM 970, The Answer. The Lions with a tough test right out of the gate, taking on a 3-0 Rams club. And earlier this week, Dallin had a chance to sit down with head coach Pete Mangorian. And the first question he asked him about was, it's been such a long layoff. Haven't played since last November. New quarterback, new defensive coordinator. A lot of change going on with this team. How does he feel about his club going into week one?
Still ahead, some final thoughts on today's game as Columbia opens the 2013 season at Fordham later today. And next week, they'll have their home opener against Monmouth at Wien Stadium. This is Columbia Football Today on AM 970, The Answer. See more of what New York City has to offer for one low price with the New York Pass. The New York Pass is your key to the city with free entry to over 70 attractions, including the Empire State Building, Statue of Liberty, NBC Studio Tours, major museums, boat cruises, walking tours, bike rentals, and discounts at restaurants, stores, and Broadway shows. Stop spending and start saving. Buy your New York Pass at NewYorkPass.com today. Back inside Columbia Football today, Jerry Recco with you for this week one opener as Columbia is on the road at Fordham to take on the 3-0 Rams. Next week, the Lions will host their Cross River adversaries from Monmouth University at Lawrence A. Ween Stadium in their 2013 home opener. We talked about Monmouth earlier and really what was just a heartbreaking loss to Lehigh. Great seats still available as Columbia takes on Monmouth next week. Tickets can be purchased at GoColumbiaLions.com forward slash tickets or by calling 888-LIONS-11. And season tickets still available with prices for the whole five-game season available for only $45 per ticket. Act today and take advantage of New York's best sports value and catch Manhattan's only college or pro football team in action this year. But today, Columbia takes on Fordham at 1 at Jack Coffey Field. Catch all the action live on the new Ivy League Digital Network. Visit ivyleaguedigitalnetwork.com forward slash Columbia. Act now to take advantage of the special 20% discount offer that expires tonight to purchase a subscription to the Ivy League Digital Network. Use promo code Columbia Alumni, one word, to get 20% off annual and four month subscriptions. Again, visit Ivy League Digital Network.com forward slash packages for more details. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash Columbia Football and Twitter at Columbia Alliance FB and at Go Columbia Alliance. It really should be a great season. I know myself and Sal Licata, uh, my broadcast partner for the season, really looking forward to it. We had a chance to get out to Columbia's intra squad scrimmage last week. The guys look good. They look sharp. They look ready to go. It was fun being out there. It was a beautiful day up at Wien Stadium. And uh, really, you can tell that this team is chomping at the bit. Because remember, a lot of college football teams have played at least one game, in some cases two, and in others, a team like Fordham. They've played three games already. And as you heard from Pete Mangorian uh, just earlier with Dallin, you know, some of these teams are in midseason form already. For Columbia, who knows? Maybe they come right out of the gate and they're ready to go. Maybe it takes them a series or two to get going. But again, Sal and I really believing that this is going to be a big season for Columbia. And it all starts today at 1 o'clock. One final break. When we come back, some closing thoughts and keys to the game as well. Columbia on the road at Fordham today. It's opening day. And we're back in a moment. It's Columbia Football Today on AM 970, The Answer. Don't go away. Discover Faculty House, the celebrated university landmark, recently restored and updated for year-round meetings, events, and weddings. With its adaptable spaces, acclaimed chefs, environmentally friendly operations, state-of-the-art audio-visual and enhanced amenities, Faculty House now offers a venue that rivals Midtown's finest. Don't forget to mention athletics when you book your event at Faculty House and receive 10% off your room rental. Call Faculty House today at 212-854-1200. That's 212-854-1200. Or go to facultyhouse.columbia.edu backslash athletics to learn more about the offer. Carmine's is proud to be a sponsor of the Columbia Lions. Carmine's is New York City's legendary family-style restaurant with locations on the Upper West Side, the Feeder District, Tropicana Resort Atlantic City, Atlantis Resort Bahamas, and our new location at Forum Shops in Las Vegas. Make your reservation on CarminesNYC.com and, of course, roar, lion, roar. Is there a song that seems more like football than Metallica and from whom the bell tolls? Welcome back inside Columbia Football Today. I'm Jerry Recco with just a couple of finishing thoughts as we get set for the season opener at Jack Coffey Field today where Columbia takes on Ford. And we spent a lot of time uh, really talking about a lot of the players on this team. Brett Nottingham making his Columbia debut today. You know, the defense, the front seven, so important. Get pressure on the quarterback, have to stop the run. But there's one group that really is the heartbeat of a football team, and that's the offensive line. And we did not spend a lot of time in them at all. But 
you know, the group of Ramaljack and Gergarevich and Thomas and Yukovich and Markham, you know, they're going to have a lot to say about what this Columbia team is offensively. Can they protect Nottingham enough? Give him time to throw. Can they be better in run blocking than they were last year? I don't know that that's possible when you look at the season Marcoris Garrett had and what he can do this year. Uh, it should be really fun. I'm really looking forward to seeing Hamilton Garner this year. You got Luke Eddy coming back, a very good kicker. Paul Delaney has become a very good punter. Uh, a lot of guys maybe we didn't get to today. We'll, we'll talk about more at length next week. Really excited. It is football season. Columbia's waited for nine months, as has the rest of the Ivy League. And today it gets underway. And when you look at this team and you look at every season, is there a better way to get started? I know these are non-conference games, but to get off the right foot with a win, get that Liberty Cup, and you are off and running in this 2012 season. Well, that'll do it for us. My thanks today to Barry Newberger, Alex Oberweger, Darlene Camacho, Dallin Cuff, who did a great job with the interviews and will continue to do so all season long. Special thanks to field hockey coach Mary Beth Freeman, of course, football coach Pete Mangorian. Don't forget, Sal Licata and myself will join you on the Ivy League Network at 1245 today for Columbia and Fordham. And I will talk to you again next week on Columbia Football Today on AM 970, The Answer.